Welcome everyone. Today we will learn how to implement a pipeline behavior with Mediator and Fluent Validation in .NET. So go to Visual Studio and create a new Ask.NET Core Web API. Define the name, select the latest .NET version. The first step is to add the required Nuget packages. So go to Manage Nuget Packages and search for Mediator. Install the latest stable version and similarly search for fluent validation package. The second step is to add a handler. So add a new file called create user. The idea is to simulate an user creation by invoking the handle method. So this class will implement the I request handler from the mediator namespace. So basically you have to define the request and response type. So the request type will be create user and the response type will be a generic class called result of type width. We will return a width simulating the new user ID. So implement the interface and the next step is to create the user class with a couple of fields. Let's define name, email, password, and config password. This class will implement the iRequest interface by passing the response type, which is the same result of type width. Now let's define this class, which will be our response type instead of exceptions. So add a new file called result. This is a generic type define a property type t which will be nullable the value and define a simple interface called i result which will contain two properties the first one is a boolean value is success and the second property is a collection of string to store the messages so let's implement the i result interface in this result class let me copy the members from the interface and let's define default values let's set to true and an empty array for the messages when the response is successful so this is the result class that we will use in the response handler and that's it now let's implement a simple logic in the handle method just to simulate the user creation so add an away keyword with task that delay to simulate that we're creating a user in any database and then we will return a new random width using the width that new width method okay that's it the next step is to add the validator for this create user class so go we'll add add create user validator class which will implement or extends the astro validator of type create user to add the rules for the create user model add a constructor and define all the rules in this constructor that simple rules for the model the first one will be a length defining the minimum and maximum characters for this field the second one for the email to verify if the email is in the correct format and add a custom message email address is invalid add another rule for the password to verify that this field is not empty and finally for the same field but comparing the value with the confirm password using the equal method and by comparing with the confirm password value and add a custom message called passwords must match so we define our create user validator the next step is to add the validation behavior using the i pipeline behavior from mediator so add a new file called validation validation behavior this will be a class with two generic types the t request and t response which will implement the i pipeline behavior from mediator with the same parameters and let's define a constraint for the t response which will be of type i result that we've defined in the uh, result class that implements it in this interface and the new keyword to create a new instance of this iResult interface. So implement the interface with a simple handle method and apply the validation using flame validation. So create a new constructor and inject the iValidator interface based on the request at a simple private field, create a new variable called result 
which will be validator and call the validate async method to validate the model and then return the response use a turn operator if the result is valid we will return the nets operation from the pipeline otherwise we will return okay we will return a new i result object by setting the success false and the messages based on the result that errors and select the error message from the collection that's it we've implemented our validation behavior now it's time to test the pipeline this validation behavior so before doing that we need to register all the services in the program.cs file so go to manage nuget packages and add another package for fluent validation to add is fluent validation that dependency injection extensions to inject all the validators through dependency injection that's it go to the program.cs file and inject first of all the mediator from assembly so uh, a, a configuration property and call uh, register services from assembly based on the type of this program class that assembly nets inject the validators from assembly containing the create user validator data class in the same assembly so we register all the validators for the same assembly in the create user validator class so import the fluent validation namespace and finally inject the validation behavior so add it as a scope by defining the service implementation which in this case will be of type i pipeline behavior and the implementation type which will be our validation behavior implementation now go to the controllers folder and rename this default controller as user and remove all this sample code create a constructor and inject the iMediator interface add a private field and create a simple HTTP post action to create a new set we will return the result class of type with create and we receive the user as an argument from the HTTP post body. So this is of type create user and then invoke the mediator.send method to send the object request to a single handler at the await keyword. And that's it. Now it's time to test the API around the project using the Swaggy UI. Let's send a post request with invalid values based on the validations that we created the name with three characters an invalid email an empty password and config password different from the password field let's execute it as you can see we're returning the messages from our validation behavior for the name for the email address for the password and the custom message that compares the password field and the config password field and it's successive is equal to false so we're invoking the validation behavior successfully returning the iResolve or creating a new instance of the iResolve interface now let's change the request model to a valid model so define valid format for the email valid password and the same password for the last field let's execute it and as you can see we're returning a random width to simulate the creation of a new user and it says true and the messages is an empty array because there are no validation errors so in this demo we've learned how to implement a validation behavior with mediator and fluent validation in that net